State houses across America remain on high alert due to threats of violence and potential protests, including the Capitol in Lansing, Michigan, creating a bit of political deja vu for the women elected to lead that state. Last April, armed protesters stormed the state house after Trump tweeted to liberate Michigan. This was during the height of protests over the governor's mask mandate and COVID closures. The sitting president has not hid his feelings about the women who run Michigan. Michigan, all she does is she has no idea what's going on. And all she does is say, oh, it's the federal government's fault. What you're doing in Michigan has been amazing. Now, you got to get your governor to open up your state, okay? Lock them all up. Despite that onslaught, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, and Attorney General Dana Nessel used their experience to warn us that the siege in Lansing was just the beginning. January 6th proved they were right. I sat down with them earlier today to discuss how they prepared Michigan once again for the possibility of unrest. Thank you all so much for being here. Governor Whitmer, here's what we heard from the Lansing police chief about how officers are preparing for potential unrest. I am uh, very concerned about the safety of our officers. Uh, what we saw, you know, on television reference to U.S. Capitol was just uh, horrific. And so for us uh, and me as a police administrator, I've had to have some tough conversations with our officers. And with that, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. And so uh, we have to take that issue into account, that variable. And so we'll be doing the best we can uh, to make sure our officers are mentally ready as well as physically ready as well. Governor, how confident are you in the security measures that have been put in place in the Capitol this weekend? Well, there are always a lot of unknowns, but I think we are prepared. We have joined our forces from our Michigan State Police to the Michigan National Guard to the local police department, as you just heard from the chief and our county sheriff's department as well. Uh, we take this very seriously, sadly, here in Michigan. We've been living with a lot of this a lot longer than the rest of the nation has in terms of seeing it play out at our Capitol uh, 10 days ago, and that's why we are taking this very seriously. We, a, a success looks like everyone going home safely, but we are prepared if um, there is any action toward violence, toward uh, destruction, and we're working collaboratively with our attorney general and across law enforcement. Attorney General Nessel, in response to the deadly insurrection on Capitol Hill, the Michigan Capitol Commission voted to ban the open carry of guns from inside the Capitol. You say it doesn't go far enough and that the Capitol is not safe. What measures would make you feel that the Capitol is safe for you and for lawmakers? Well, all we would really need to do is to implement the very same procedures that we have had in place for decades in every single courthouse in the state of Michigan, which is simply to have metal detectors and to have either police officers or security guards who are, you know, ensuring that people are not bringing in either firearms or explosive devices of any kind. And that's we we do that when we go see the Detroit Lions play. I don't know why we can't have the same security measures in place for our lawmakers and those who wish to visit our state capitol. Secretary Benson, armed protesters have held rallies outside of your home. What precautions have been put in place to protect lawmakers, not only at the Capitol building, but outside? Well, we've been working in partnership with law enforcement at the state, local and federal level to ensure that protections are in place. And we've got a lot of information and data to ensure that those protections are effective. So I feel very safe. I know my colleagues do as well. But it's about being vigilant and it's about keeping a, a focus on the issue and recognizing that the hateful words and rhetoric that we've heard for months now in, in our social media networking and everywhere else has indeed transformed for the possibility of hateful actions. And we have to be prepared for that. Governor Whitmer, here's what the leader of the Southeast Michigan Volunteer Militia told our NBC News reporter Dasha Burns about the storming of Michigan's capital. Take a listen. Earlier last year, when the militias of Michigan and the protesters let themselves into the Michigan Capitol. We were loud, we were obnoxious, we got everybody's attention. There was no violence, there was no destruction of property, there was no injuries. We went in, we had our voices heard, we left. We had a good time doing it. 
Um, the world's changed since then. Hopefully we can get back to it. But for right now, we just have to come up with different evidence. Governor, your reaction to that characterization? Well, you know, I think that success is having the ability to voice your um, support for or your critique of your state government. There's no question. But it's also defined as everyone going home safely. And that's what we are hoping for today. Now, that last event that he just described also had people with long guns and automatic rifles standing them up legislators and intimidating them. That's much the same tactic that we saw play out in the nation's capital. Many people that were a part of that last event that he described were actually indicted in the plot to kidnap and murder me. And so it is not just a demonstration. What we have seen is a scary, very concerning elevation of actions taken to intimidate or to hurt people who are simply trying to do their jobs and keep people safe. And whether that's directed at me or Dr. Fauci or Secretary Benson or the Secretary of State in Georgia, it is wrong. And I'm I'm grateful that people are coming to this conclusion after it being directed at the United States Congress. But this has been going on for 10 months and we've been asking people to take this seriously. Well, to that point, why do you think that the storming of your Capitol wasn't taken as a warning of what was to come with the Capitol Hill attack? Because it, this whole year has been so incredibly partisan and destructive. The partisanship around the act of wearing a mask has cost people lives. When the president tweets something like liberate Michigan or an attack on our attorney general or our secretary of state or on me, it incites people. It legitimizes actions to hurt us. And that is not acceptable. And it should never have been deemed acceptable long ago. I called Vice President Pence, who now was the victim of it. I called the Republican leaders here in Michigan and asked them, bring down the heat. We're seeing death threats. And no one did a darn thing. And maybe now that it has been directed at them, they will. But it, this is a moment where I would love to see people of goodwill on both sides of the aisle, in the private sector as well, take this on. Domestic terrorism is not acceptable, and none of us should coddle it, incite it, encourage it, or legitimize it. Attorney General Nessel, the leader of that militia, says that four militia groups, including his own, have told their members to stay away from the Michigan Capitol today due to potential violence from the Proud Boys, Boogaloo Boys. Is there a distinction in the type of threat posed by groups like the Southeast Michigan Volunteer Militia and extremist groups like the Boogaloo Boys? Well, there might be, but I think we have to take any anti-government groups very, very seriously. Um, and be prepared for any or all of them to be involved in potentially illegal activities. And I know that I've had some very serious discussions um, with our partners uh, at the federal level. We're very lucky we have people like uh, Alyssa Slotkin and Gary Peters, who we know are going to play prominent roles uh, on congressional committees involving Homeland Security. And I've talked to them about the need for more resources in the state of Michigan uh, in order for us to properly combat this exponential rise in these extremist groups and their activities. So we have to be prepared to combat each and every one of these groups head on uh, and in the event that they commit any sort of illegal activity uh, that they can be held properly accountable. Secretary Benson, here's what that leader says about the message they want to send to Michigan's lawmakers. Take a listen. We wanted to remind our electors that they do answer to the people who put them in those offices. There's still questions circulating about the way our elections were conducted that haven't been answered. There is no, uh, no apparent rush on the part of the administration to look into or answer those questions. Add that to the fact that we are on our 10th month going into the 11th month of severe COVID restrictions that are destroying businesses, disrupting families, causing problems all across the state. And there's definitely no shortage of grievances that we can voice to the, uh, to the governor. 
Secretary, well, you true. announced that Michigan clerks have already completed over 100 local post-election audits. All have confirmed the accuracy and integrity of Michigan's November election. Why hasn't transparency been enough to combat Trump's lies and misinformation? I was going to say it's true that we're on the side of making sure every voice is heard and every vote is counted, every valid vote is counted. That's precisely what we've done here in Michigan. And that's precisely what, as you mentioned, the audits, the works of our over 1,600 clerks all across the state uh, have, have shown over the past several months. And the true story coming out of this election is indeed that more people voted than ever before in our state's history. That was the most secure election in our state's history. And the incredible amount of scrutiny that has been placed, the number of questions that have been asked and answered consistently since the polls closed on November 3rd have only shown to really underscore those facts. And so my hope going forward is that we can focus on how to actually make the success of the November 3rd election, the high turnout, the high security, the story and the work that we do to ensure that is not just a moment, but it's something that continues for elections ahead. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.